Happy, oh, whatever the day of the week it is, who cares, you know. Welcome to physics. Uh, I'm glad you're with us. Hope everything is going well for you folks. Um, of course, now you're doing a brief study of fluids. And I wanted to go over some example problems with you very quickly, just so you have a good grasp on how to solve these problems. So we'll go ahead and just look at example one real quick. And we kind of need to read it so we can see what it says. All right, determine the buoyant force of a granite statue that is 50 kilograms of mass. And I'm just going to go ahead and start writing what I'm given here. Uh, just keep the standard approach here. As you go through these fluid problems, it's always good to collect everything that you know. Uh, 50 kilograms, and then it says it takes up 1.56 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic meters. That sure sounds like a volume to me. Uh, again, th those units, meters cubed, that really indicates you're dealing with volume, anything dealing with space, okay? Uh, and so we've got 1.56 times 10 to the negative 2 meters cubed, all right? That's a volume. And it says that we've got, it's submerged in fresh water, and that density of fresh water, I'll just do rho, subscript is FW. And again, this is a new symbol that you've seen. This is a Greek letter, they pronounce it rho. And this is how I draw my rows. It's, it's kind of like a P, only it's really not a P. It's got this kind of tail on the end of it. Uh, and so, again, this is my P, this is my row. You can see very different, very different characters. Uh, and so when you draw a bunch of them in a line, you can say you drew a row of rows. Uh, but, uh, okay, that's, yeah, got to have a good time. But anyway, this is the density of fresh water, which we know is 1 times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meters. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right. They also give you the density of granite. And this is often a trouble spot, uh, is, is which one do you use when you calculate buoyant force? Well, granite is 2.7 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per cubic meter. So you look at that, you say, okay, nice list of givens. And let's go ahead and finish reading here. They want us to find, uh, uh, de determine the buoyant force. That's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just say find the buoyant force. And I always do, that's a capital F, subscript is B for buoyant force. And in my sketch here, see that fluid, any fluid exerts a supportive force. That's what the buoyant force is. And so on this free body diagram, of course, we would have a force due to gravity, mg, maybe some small support force, normal force from the floor, but then also we've got an upward support force from the buoyancy, right? Now, in this case, they ask you specifically for the buoyant force. So you really aren't going to worry about normal force and mg in this particular problem. We're just going to find the buoyant force, which we know that the buoyant force equals, and I want to write this out for you, this, the buoyant force equals the weight of the displaced fluid. And if you think about some fluid that's being displaced, that just means we're pushing it out of the way. See, this statue pushes water out of the way. If you take all that water and put it on a scale and calculate the weight of that water that's been pushed out of the way, that's the buoyant force. And so when we find buoyant force, you need to know the density of the fluid being displaced. Are we displacing granite? No. So don't worry about this density. It's not being displaced. This is the density that you worry about right here. And so we know that buoyant force, we, you read in your text, buoyant force is equal to uh, the density of the displaced fluid and uh, times the volume times gravity. But this is the density of your displaced fluid. So that's going to be the fresh water. This is the volume of the object. I'll put volume of maybe granite, my small subscripts there, times g. So when we go ahead and run this number, we'll just take 1 times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meter, multiply out that, uh, take the volume, cubic meters there, and then uh, lastly is gravity, of course, 9.8 meters per second squared is the g. And when you run that number, I expect, unless I made a mistake, see, uh, you, you would have to just you know, go with the class consensus here. I'm expecting 152.88 newtons. And while I have you on the line here, I'd like to go over and show you a quick demonstration of this. See, we're talking about buoyant force, and I want you to be, have a good grasp of what buoyant force is. If you take a look at these lab supplies, I have here some fluid. And if you notice, I take this object, but I want you to follow, watch the fluid level. See, it's right about half the bucket. Placing this in here, watch the fluid level. Do you see it's increasing? 
increases, now the fluid level decreases. See what the block is doing is when it goes into the fluid, it's pushing fluid out of the way because of its volume. Okay, uh, and so if we were to take, let's take and put this block, check this out now. So you, that's what we mean by displace. Now we can make this very, very visual by taking a spout with some fluid in it and watch what happens when I push the block down through this uh, container. Watch the fluid come, come out here. You ready? In fact, I'll, make, I'll do it like this. Ready? Check this out. Okay? Ready? Go! Whoops! I guess I got a little carried away there with my buoyancy, but did you see I displaced some fluid here? And I've displaced some fluid out of the spout. Let's suppose I didn't goof up and spill all the fluid. If I collect all that fluid and then put it on the scale and weigh it, the weight of that fluid is your buoyant force. So back to our problem, that's why you take the density of your fluid, not the density of the object. It's the density of whatever fluid is being displaced, in this case, fresh water. The volume is that of your object. So if, if this were the, let's be the volume of this object here. Okay, that's what you would have. It's the object's volume, the fluid's density, rho, and then of course gravity. And I kind of made a mess here, but uh, who cares, all right? And so uh, I'm gonna sign out now and then we'll get example two here in just a second. You can go ahead and cut that there.